So actually, as you, we all know that India is a very vast country mm -hmm. and a very populous country. Overpopulation and poverty, these two combined together, have led to India also having the maximum number of blind in the entire world. Mm -hmm. So it's a very long journey for any doctor or any organization. Mm -hmm. Government is working, but it's about 40% of the whole work. Mm -hmm. And the 60 plus percentage of the work is done by the NGOs mm -hmm. all over India. Mm -hmm. And we uh, ourselves are working for four decades. Mm -hmm. And 1978, I started my journey single-handedly. Mm -hmm. And now we have uh, three main hospitals and two satellite clinics mm -hmm. where our team goes every day and uh, we examine the patients. Mm -hmm. Then we select them if they are found to have cataracts or other diseases mm -hmm. which are operable. Mm -hmm. Then we bring them to our base hospitals mm -hmm. and then we perform the surgeries which are free for the poor eye patients. When we're talking about like uh, as India has its own challenges in a sense, you just mentioned it. But that awareness campaign, so what is uh, that support that we are getting from Ministry of Health, the government of India? Because uh, they do, there is a lot of claims that this is happening. But when it comes to you go to the rural area, not even not to the rural, I mean, like if you go outside the main, uh, like a bigger cities, you find people are living in a very miserable condition. Yeah, you have uh, taken up a very important point. Government of India at the national level is one of the few countries which has a national control for prevention of blindness program. But I sa as I said that uh, such a vast country and so many people to treat, it's always a combination of uh, governmental and non-governmental. Okay. Private and government partnerships, how are they working now? They are uh, working on, they are very sincere about this from the government side. Mm -hmm. But it takes long time to implement these mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the non-governmental organizations like ours, we are working like we are working four decades, maybe some working more than that. Mm -hmm. So we have our own experiences. And as you said about the awareness, mm -hmm. I also agree that awareness is the key mm -hmm. for prevention of blindness. Absolutely. And 80% of the blindness mm -hmm is unavoidable in the beginning mm -hmm. if it is treated mm -hmm. at, at the, the right, right time by the right people mm -hmm. and right way. Mm -hmm. So that's a very interesting point which you have raised. So when we're talking about if we start like, you know, we can really save money also. So there should be such kind of those programs, so preventive programs, which has to be again a partnership from the school level. It should yeah, be like, right. you know, we talk about hygiene right. perspective also mm -hmm. when they're doing, because most of the things do occur. So when uh, doing a surgery, you mentioned like cataract and all, how much does it cost? In Actually, that? our program is, uh, uh, it would interest you because this program is for three days. Mm -hmm. On the day one, mm -hmm. we go to a pre-decided place mm -hmm. where the camps are organized mm -hmm. and our team has already done the survey. Mm -hmm. So our medical and paramedical team goes on that day mm -hmm. and we sell, examine, screen the patients mm -hmm. and those who are operable patients, mm -hmm. we bring them in our own vehicles mm -hmm. to the base hospital mm -hmm. and then we keep them for three days. Mm -hmm. We First day we examine them, investigate them find different things about them then and then we admit them we provide the food mm -hmm. and most of the time which we don't claim but the their relatives also need food because they also don't have access to good food so that also is taken care then second day they are operated mm -hmm. and third day their dressings are seen on the first post operative day mm -hmm. and then we bring them back to their own villages mm -hmm. where we take up their examinations regularly for at least two months. Mm -hmm. follow so up. follow up. Mm -hmm. Because you know, if there is not a good follow up, then it's a difficult Absolutely. surgical situation. Yeah. So we don't leave any patient just hit and run away situation. And this all is only in 35 US dollars worth. Oh, wow. So s just if we skip like a five cups of coffee, yeah. we can yeah. definitely have somebody operate a surgery and giving somebody a vision is very, very important. Do we say that when we talk about uh, uh, three days, because yeah. the people, those who are poor, those who cannot afford surgery, this is a good mission that you started, that you're getting them to the clinic yeah. instead of like, yeah. because uh, yes, if they will yeah. not be having transportation right. also, right. Right. because generally there are, right. oh, we do free surgeries, yeah. but free surgeries, how people are going to reach yeah. to them. So that must have been one 
of the component which has been right. kept in mind. Right. Right. And so how many you've been for, uh, performing on a... Uh, till now, initially as I told, told you that I was alone, but all together uh, till June 17, 2017, we have operated 28,400 plus eye operations free of charge okay. and about 260,000 uh, free eye patients were examined mm -hmm. and we have conducted uh, more than 720 eye outreach camps mm -hmm. reaching the unreached. Mm -hmm. So. Let's, let's hear about reaching the unreached, which you mentioned. Yeah. So that is also one of the components that you are going to the villages and yeah. remotes. Yeah. So how's the situation in UP? Are you only covering the UP or going beyond that? It's a good question. Uh, just for your information, as we all know, that poverty is the essential problem for many things in a developing country. And, uh, you know, poverty produces a compulsive culture of numbness. Mm -hmm. So what the recent studies on poverty are done all over the world mm -hmm. And a new definition mm -hmm. to define poverty is there, mm -hmm. which is known as multi-dimensional poverty index. Mm -hmm. So that means that the money is one part, but the surrounding, the hygiene and other things, how many members in the earning. Mm -hmm. So according to mul multiple dimensional poverty index, mm -hmm. my state, which is Uttar Pradesh, is one of the last seven, eight states where this is a very low situation and uh, coming back to how people can uh, support you because if somebody watching our program and they want like okay I want to take a pledge I want to get two surgeries done you know that's much only I can afford I'm like so is there any website that they can yeah there is a website and recently now it's very important for the viewers to know that India has a foreign currency regulation act mm -hmm. in which the foreign contributions can be received by any institution directly in their own currencies if they register that mm -hmm. but it's very difficult because of the terrorism and other problems that they are not registering but since our institution is a very long uh, standing mm -hmm. so we are registered for that so any citizen anywhere in any part of the world can directly give donations to our uh, account which is in State Bank of India the details are there so that's how that's one thing mm -hmm. and also a very unique idea which we are now promoting which you can also take forward people like you is coins for sight mm -hmm. so we are encouraging the small ch school going children to have a sort of a piggy bank in their place and they get the coins from their mothers fathers out of what they are spending in dollars or whatever way and then then they keep it for the whole year and then they open it and then that's how many operations are done through that so it's the reaching the unreached nobody takes uh, interest for the youth to do, do something